So we're gonna do a soil sample, a sediment sample, and we're gonna use this tool. It's actually pretty cool. It works a little bit like a soda straw when you put it in some liquid and you put your finger over the top and then you lift it and that liquid stays in that straw. Then you can move it and release your finger and that water or whatever the liquid was goes into another vessel. So we're gonna do that, but we're gonna be getting a sediment sample. So this uh, piece of equipment is really kind of cool. Right now it's open and you can see right through it. However, it has a ball joint, right? So this is the lever for the ball joint. And when I turn that lever, it closes that space. And that is how we trap both water and the sediment, right? So I'm gonna go ahead out into the water and we're at low tide right now, but there are some random rocks. I'm gonna be dragging my feet a bit to make sure that I don't trip on any of those rocks and end up in the water. Oh, there's a big old log right here. So what we're looking for is some sediment that's a little bit more mushy, not so rocky, so that we can get the end into the sediment, right? So we should be good right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my instrument. I'm gonna push it and I'm going to sort of move back and forth. Now, usually you could tell how deep you're going based on the ball joint and how far that lever for the ball joint goes into the water. Go in a little bit more. And we're gonna close that joint reach down to the bottom, put our hand over the end. We're gonna release water that's at the top. Okay, cool. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the table and we're going to unscrew this area here and this part of the pipe is gonna come down and we'll be able to check that sample. So the next thing we have to do once we get it out of the water is we have to unscrew this particular piece right here and then pull up on the tube on the top. You can see it does hold a little water from where the ball valve was down, so it can get a little bit messy, right? I'm gonna pour the excess water out. And then I'm gonna use this uh, dowel. Now I've already taken a different sample out. So we have one sample here and I'm going to go ahead and take the second sample out right now just by pushing on the dowel through the tube, right? We've got our second sample. All right, so one of the things we want to do is to measure it. All right, so this one will sort of put this piece back. So this one is approximately four and a half inches or 11 and a half centimeters. The second one is um, about three and a half inches, about um, eight and a half centimeters. So why do we take sediment samples? Sediment samples can tell us a lot. First of all, there may be some organic material in here and it might tell us a little bit about what lives here. So organic material that might be in these sediment samples, or it's gonna be things like pieces of leaves or some pieces of wood. There may also be some animal material in here as well. Um, another thing the soil sample is going to tell us is a little bit about the types of soils. So this particular sample has quite a bit of clay in it. Um, it's a teeny bit greasy, but it definitely holds its shape really well. So you can see that. Sometimes we see different colors 
um, from striation in there. We don't really, you could see a little bit of off-white there. Um, that could be part of organic material. Um, but I'm not seeing like a ton of anything super interesting in this particular uh, sample. In the past, these are some of the things that I've found. So you may not know what that is because it's, it's pretty worn down. But um, if you look at the color of it and think about what might be around here um, or what might used to have been around here, what might have been traveling down the river, uh, then maybe this will be uh, something that you can guess. You can pause the video and maybe take a couple of guesses. But um, these are eroded pieces of brick. So brick was made all up and down the Hudson River at one point. Um, and then also there were buildings all up and down the river that are no longer here. 100 years ago when the Hudson River was way more um, industrial, then of course we'd have more buildings around. But today there aren't. There's way more recreation in the area than there is industry. So soil samples are collected in a form like this where the, we keep that cylindrical form we label, obviously, today um, is October 22nd, 2020, and we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up so it stays sort of true to form. I'm sure you have some ideas of what you think it looks like. I will guarantee it doesn't smell like that. However, it might smell a little bit um, briny because of the salt, or it may smell a little bit like methane because of the decomposing materials in there. Sometimes we do find shell. Sometimes we find things a little bit bigger than shell. Uh, this was found earlier on the shoreline. So come take a look at this and um, you can pause the video if you wanna kind of take a guess what you think this might be from. So if you didn't guess, it is the claw from a blue claw crab. Um, and uh, this is just a piece obviously. So. Uh, but it is not a molt, it is definitely a piece of that shell fully formed, so this, this particular animal is probably deceased. One of the nice things about doing these sediment samples, if you get a good one, is that it's going to tell us about pollutants that have settled to the bottom. So sometimes pollutants that come from emissions uh, will uh, get into the water because of precipitation, and sometimes pollutants get into the water because of industry. And one of the things that gets tested is for uh, chemicals that are not good, obviously, pollutants. And if you want to think about one, I'll give you a couple of clues. The General Electric plant is responsible for a good majority of one of the pollutants. And this is one you may know because we talk about it when we talk about whether or not fish are healthy to eat. All right, you may pause the video if you want. All right, so the answer is PCBs. And uh, you may or may not have heard about them, but they're definitely in the sediment. And those samples are gonna give us a good idea of where the levels of PCBs are all up and down the Hudson River during day in the life of the Hudson when people are all up and down the river on the same exact day. Okay, cool.